Okay, so in our um, previous meeting, we spoke about the concept of um, time value of money. And we said that the value of money changes over time. And um, it means that if you give your money to somebody and the person is paying back later, the person would have to pay you what? Interest. The person would have to pay you interest because the value of that money will change over time. Now, we enter into certain formulas that when you have a lump sum payment, okay, the present value of a future lump sum payment is PV is equal to FV into brackets, FV by one plus RN, okay, which is technically the same as FV times one over one plus R raised to the power N. And we said that this thing here is called present value interest factor. And also for lump sum, if you want to find the future value of a present amount, which is a lump sum, that is FV is equal to one plus R raised to the power N. And we said that this factor, one plus R raised to the power N, we call it future value interest factor. However, as opposed to lump sum, okay, as opposed to lump sum, we also have something we call annuity. And for annuity, annuity refers to um, regular cash flows, all right? And the cash flows must be the same. So regular cash flows and that cash flows must be the same, all right? But there is a terminal period. So if you want to find the present value of ordinary annuity, we said it is the payment or the amount, okay, into bracket one minus one plus R raised to the power minus N all over R. Now, remember that, or note that one plus R raised to the power minus N. It's like saying one over one plus R raised to the power N. Because let's say the inverse of negative, sorry, sorry, five raised to the power negative one means that the inverse of five, which is one over five, actually. So if you say one plus R raised to the power minus N, it is similar to saying one plus R, like this and this is the same. So for some books, let me repeat myself, and even in your slides, in your slides and also for some books, okay? They try to bring this R, this R here, they try to bring the R outside. So they write it as payment over R, and mathematically it's the same, okay? So they say payment over, they bring the R outside, and it's the same thing. Then they do into bracket one minus one over one plus R, raised to the power n. So these two formulas are technically the same. They are the same. So if you see, especially the second one in your slides, don't think this first one we have been using is wrong. What we have been using is very correct. In fact, I prefer the first one because the first one, this whole thing is called present value interest factor of annuity, which can be read from the table. But if you write like the formula, like the second one here, the one in brackets alone is not called present value interest factor of annuity. So when you write the formula, like the second one, you can't read from the table. That's why I 
really like like I really like the first one because then it enables you to like read from the table, right? So none of them is wrong. I mean, the two of them are the same. So if you see this or this in your slides, they mean the same thing. Just that I prefer the first one because we can read the factor from the table. Okay. Then we also have future value of ordinary annuity. That is the payment into bracket one plus R raised to the power N minus one all over R. And this factor is called future value interest factor of annuity, all right? So the last time I also mentioned that ordinarily, od ordinarily, annuity payments are received at the end of the period. But if annuity payment, for whatever reason, is received at the beginning of the period, we call it annuity due. So ordinarily, annuity payments are received at the end of a period. However, for whatever reason, if said payment are received at the beginning of the period, we call it annuity due. All right, so um, that is the future value of ordinary annuity formula. But I said that at some point, at some point, these annuities may be received at the beginning of the period, which is ordinarily not supposed to be so. Ordinarily, we are not supposed to receive annuity payments at the beginning of a period. Okay, one, one example of annuity payments is our salaries. Our salaries are not given at the beginning of a month. However, we can have those extreme situations. So that brought us to the concept of annuity due, annuity due. And we said that for annuity due, okay, the payment or receipt are made at the beginning of a period. The payment or receipt are made at the beginning of the period. So when it, be, when it happens like that, we modify the formula a little. So in that sense, all we do is that we add one plus R, okay? So you multiply the formula by one plus R. Okay, so present value of annuity due becomes the payment into bracket one minus one plus R raised to the power minus and all over R. Then you multiply it again by one plus R. Then future value of annuity due is payment into bracket one plus R raised to the power n minus one all over r times one plus r. So once you multiply the ordinary formulas by one plus r, they become due formulas, all right? And the last time we were able to also employ these concepts in doing amortization and amortization shadow. So these are, this is just a short summary of what we did the last time, okay? There's just a short summary. I'm just intentionally going over them because you employ some of the formulas in what we are coming to do today. Okay. So let's come to today's meeting then. Valuation of securities. Now, one of the things we must be able to do as business people is that we must be able to value securities, okay? We must be able to value securities. Now, valuation of security actually enables us to value our business when it becomes necessary. Because there are several sources of finance when it comes to business, all right? There are several sources of long-term finance. So when it comes to businesses, there are several sources of long-term finance. When it comes to businesses, there are several sources of long-term finance. 
One of them is shares. Or one of, it's also called stock. One of them is American, one of them is British. I don't know which is which, but shares and stock. I know one is American um, English and one is British. And then we also have bonds. So these two are basically the main sources of finance when it comes to, um, this, these two are basically the main sources of finance when it comes to um, long-term finance, right? But the shares or the stock, we have two types of them. We have the ordinary one and we have the preference one. or the preferred one. That's how some books call it, preferred stock. So in some books you can hear preference shares or preferred stock, they mean the same thing, okay? So these three, so in, in essence, in total, these three are the main source of finance when it comes to um, businesses, like the main source of long-term finance when it comes to business, right? So let's say I'm going to acquire, I'm going to buy a business. Okay, I'm going to buy a business. How much will I buy it? Now, remember that the ownership structure of a business includes like the people who are financing the business. They are the owners of the business. Or they are, they are part of the ownership structure, right? Of course, with these three sources of long-term finance, the people who are like the real owners are the ordinary shareholders. The ordinary shareholders are like the main owners. However, preference shareholders and bonds, they have also contributed money or long-term finance to the business. So if I'm going to buy a business, I must be able to value the whole ownership structure and pay for it. So if I'm going to buy a business, I must be able to value the total ordinary shares the total preference shares, and the total bonds. These three things come together to form the value of a business. So that when you're going to buy a business, it means that you are paying off the ordinary shareholders, you are paying the preference shareholders, and you are paying all the bonds. When you pay off all these three things, you can be able to buy a business. So in some books, valuation of securities, they, they, some books call it valuation of a business. Because if you value these three um, securities, you have actually valued a business. Like you have actually valued a business. Okay. Now, that is an that is an introduction to valuation of securities. So anytime you're able to value these three securities, it technically means that you be, you should be able to value a business because these three securities usually form the ownership structure of a business. So where do we buy these things? Where do we buy these, um, these securities? We normally trade these securities on a financial market. So we are going to talk about the overview of a financial market, the overview of a financial market. Now, for a financial market, we have several, it can take several forms and types, okay? So we can differentiate financial market in, the, in terms of capital market versus money market. And then in terms of primary market versus secondary market. So those are the two main distinctions, capital market versus money market, and then primary market versus secondary market. So these, these are the two main distinctions, all right? Capital market versus money market, and then um, primary market versus secondary market. Now, when it comes to capital market, okay, 
capital markets are like financial markets that are used for trading long-term securities. So any security that will mature after a year, we call it long-term security. So capital markets are markets that are used for trading what? Long-term security. That is securities that usually matures after a year. Okay. A typical example is bond. Bond, you pay back after a year. You don't pay back within a year. And money market is a market that is used for trading short-term securities. Securities that matures less than a year. A typical example is treasury bill. Treasury bills, they normally mature less than a year. So if you go and buy a treasury bill, you get your money back within a year. All right, it's not after a year. So that is one distinction, capital market versus money market. Another distinction is primary market versus secondary market. Okay. Now, in Ghana, if you go to the stock exchange, there is something called GAX. You can, you can just read about it, it's called GAX. You call something GAX. You can, I mean, when you have a time, you can just read about it. Oh, what is happening? Please a moment. <laughs> 